Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Previously we discussed how a tangent frame is constructed using polygon vertex positions, UV coordinates and the vertex normal. We also implemented the tangent vector calculation in code, so now we have vertices with normal and tangent vectors, which are interpolated on the triangle surface for use in the pixel shader. Here we can compute the bitangent vector from the interpolated normal and tangent vectors. Now the main reason for constructing this coordinate system is to be able to transform vectors that are with respect to the tangent space and bring them into the object space. So when we have a normal vector which is sampled from a normal map somewhere on the triangle surface, we can bring this vector into object space, which is the same space as the vertex normals. This is good because then we can use the sampled normal in exactly the same way we used an interpolated vertex normal for lighting calculations. In order to transform the sampled normal, we can simply multiply by the TBN matrix, which has the axis of the tangent frame in its rows. Multiplying the result with the world matrix will bring the vector into world space where we do our lighting calculations. However, we can also bring the entire TBN matrix into world space doing the same multiplication. Note that we already transformed the vertex normal and tangent vectors to world space in the vertex shader, which you can see in the previous video. Therefore, the constructed by tangents will also be in world space. Having the TBN matrix in world space reduces the number of calculations that we need to do in the pixel shader. As I mentioned in the last video, applying normal maps can be done in just a few lines of shader code, so let's go ahead and write that code. In the last video, we changed the way the vertex shader reads the sign bits for vertex normals and tangent vectors. And because of that, our models that were imported before this change aren't rendered correctly anymore. So I'll have to re-import the textured model and I also made a new texture pack which you can download on Patreon or Coffee Ko if you are a supporter of this channel. When importing the model file, make sure to select MIG-T space so that the importer will calculate the tangent. I'll explain what MIG-T space is in the next video, but since we have our tangent calculation function in the same code path, we should select this option. Opening the geometry asset, we see that it's displayed correctly in the geometry editor, which also saves the model file for testing. I can rename it and run the test application again, where we see that it looks the way it should. Ok, next I'll import the new textures. Here we only have to set a format for the metal rough texture, which should be BC5. Again, opening each one will save the texture for testing. We only have to rename the files. And this is what this character looks like with the new skin. The only part that remains is to implement normal mapping in the pixel shader. As we know, the vector components of a normal vector are in the range between minus 1 and plus 1. 
However, the sampled floating point values are between 0 and 1. This is because we use a unitary normalized texture, also known as a unorm texture. We can scale this value by multiplying it by 2 and subtracting 1 from the result. And because we use the two-channel grayscale texture that only contains the X and Y components, we have to compute the Z component in shader. Since the Z component for normal maps is always a positive value, we don't have to worry about its sign. As we saw earlier, we need to transform this vector to world space using the tangent frame that was also brought to world space in the vertex shader. These are interpolated vectors which can have a length that's slightly different from one because of interpolation. Therefore, we are normalizing them here again. Since we have both the normal and tangent vectors, we can compute the bitangent by taking the cross product of the two vectors and multiply the result by the tangent frame's handedness. The matrix that will transform the sampled normal vector to world space is then constructed from the T, B and N vectors. Oh, I forgot we don't have a tangent vector in the surface data structure. In order to transform the sampled normal vector to world space, we multiply each component of the vector with each row of the TBN matrix. Note that the order of parameters in the multiplication function will ensure that nx is multiplied by t, ny is multiplied by b, and nz is multiplied by n. This is all we have to write in order to use a normal map for shading a surface. I'll fix my typos and then we can check if it works. Ah, I see I forgot the dot product here. Alright, it looks like we have some extra details now on our surface. We are therefore basically done, but what I normally do after adding a new feature is go around and play with its parameters in order to see if I can find any artifacts. So that's what I'd like to do for the remainder of this video. Upon first inspection, the model does look a bit too shiny. Let me have a look at the tangent reconstruction in the vertex shader. Well, I'm not sure if this is causing the problem, but I was using the wrong variable here. Okay, for this model there is something strange going on and I'm not sure why it happens, but it's fixed when I reverse the tangent handedness. Let me show you what I mean by disabling some of the lights. Hmm, it's still hard to see. Let me use only one light that's shining from below. Oh, by the way, I did figure out why we had to use a high intensity for point lights and spotlights. It's because the attenuation calculation is nonsensical and I just used some random values to do smooth stepping. Changing the limits of the smooth step will fix the issue. We'll come back to this in a later video, where we'll implement attenuations that are more physically correct. And like I said, I'll only add a light that shines from below. This is so that we can see the normal map effect at its maximum.
Here we see the right side of the character, where these little circles appear to be sticking out of the surface. On the other side, however, they are carving into the surface. We can see the same thing happening in the front side as well. Let's flip the tangent space and have a look again. Here we see that the circles are carving in on this side as well as the other side. Let me re-enable our lights. Ok, so it took me some time to figure out why we have to flip the tangent frame sign, but it has to do with how we import mesh UVs in the FBX importer. I'll explain and fix it in the next episode, so that we don't have to do this hack anymore. The model still looks too shiny though, so I'm going to play with the roughness value to see if that makes a difference. Let's lower the power of shininess. On an unrelated note, we also don't need to do this extra logical AND operation. Well, it looks a bit different, but I guess that's just how specular fong lighting looks like. We'll switch to physically based rendering soon, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, that's how we calculate the tangent space and use it for normal mapping. In the next video, I'm going to present a more standardized way of calculating the tangent space in order to avoid certain artifacts. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and as always, thank you so much for joining me. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.